Miss Brooke. Yes, that's right. I wonder if I may introduce myself. My name's Telford, and I've just taken over from Mr. Stetchley as manager of Knights Bank. Oh, pleased to meet you. Mr. Stetchley, uh, tell me about you. Of course, I said what a thriving business you have. Oh, that's nice. Can't grumble, you know. Yes, as a matter of fact, he uh, took me round various customers introducing me, but uh, you were always so busy, we didn't like to interrupt the good work. Yes, well, it's the cross-channel boom, as they call it. The French are coming in here, buying butter by the case and lamb by the carcass. God knows how they get it all through their customs. Oh, oh that's excellent. As a matter of fact, I, um, I was coming in to see Mr. Stetchley sometime soon. Oh, well, he finished yesterday, so, uh, I'm afraid you'll just have to put up with me. Is there anything I can do? But it's, um, it's just routine, really. Uh, my accountant has convinced me I should form a company. He says there are real tax advantages at my turnover. Oh, I'm, I'm sure of it. So you'd like to open a company account? Yes, that's right. It evidently has to be all separate. Yes, that, that's right. You see, you'll be employing yourself, so you'll have to have a separate account from your company. <laughs> it's daft, isn't it? Crackers. It means I shall have to work so much harder. Oh, why? Well, I can't abide slackers. Anyone who works for me has to work hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the whole story, is it? Uh, yes. Amazing, isn't it? You know, I bet I get more turnover per square foot than they do in Oxford Street. Yes, could be. Well, I'd better. The rents are about the same. Uh, but I am going to extend. This is my uh, stock room. I'm going to convert this into sales area and build a, a storeroom onto the back there. There's 30 yards of land out there doing nothing. Will you be doing that soon? Oh, oh, the plan's all drawn up. Just that I've been so busy, I haven't got round to sorting it out. Well, if you need any help in financing it, you know where we are. All right, I'll be knocking on your door. Oh, excuse me. Ah, bonjour, ladies. Now then, what can I do for you? Que voulez-vous? Uh, the, 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 Come in. Oh, good morning, Mr. Everly. On our own now. Yes. You well this morning? Oh, fine. Fine. Oh, that's good. So I'm afraid I have a trace of a headache. Still, it was a very good send-off for Mr. Stetchley. Oh, yes, indeed. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, I expect Mr. Stetchley has more than just a trace of a headache. Yes, it's poor Mr. Stetchley. <laughs> now, leave the uh, door open, please. Oh, good morning. Now, you're uh, Julie, aren't you? Yes, that's right. That's right. I always brought Mrs. Stetchley a cup of coffee when he arrived. I don't know if you'd like me to still... Oh, I do. Sounds an excellent idea. Thank you very much. Oh, good morning, Carol. Good morning. You come to tell me what I'm doing today? You asked me for a list of firms in the town employing more than 100 people. I've done that. I've put where they banked, if I knew. Oh, that's excellent. At 10.15, Mr. Burton is coming to see you. Yes. He's a local builder, a customer. I've got his file here. Oh. Very efficient. He's borrowed a lot. Do we know why he's coming in? No, I don't. Mr. Everly may know. Yes, well, perhaps when you go, you'd ask him to come in, will you? Yes. And at 11.15, you have an appointment with a Mrs. Phillips. That's her file. Mm -hmm. Thank you. She won't want anything except to tell you about her budgies. Budgies? Yes. Well, she makes an appointment to discuss her investments. She's got 800 in local authority bonds and 300 in equities. She never moves them, but she's always worried about them. But what she really wants to talk about is her budgies. That's right. Oh, God. We got many of them. Our fair share. 
Right, uh, anything else? Only the golf club. I've filled in the form as far as I can. If you could complete it, I'll get it off. Oh, thank you. Mr. Stetchley said he'd propose me for the Royal St. Ports Yacht Club. Oh, yes, he filled in the form. It's on my desk. Oh, there's no hurry when you come in again. So if you'd ask uh, Mr. Everly to come in, please. Oh, we've got a new girl starting today. Oh, yes, of course we have. Um, right, well, perhaps I'd better see her first and then Mr. Everly. What's her name? Elizabeth Cowley. This is her file. Right, thank you very much. Come in. Hello. Hello. So you're Elizabeth Cowley. Yes. And you're feeling very strange and new. Yes. Yes, well, so am I, but it's worse for you because I've worked in a branch before. Do sit down. Are you glad to be starting work? Oh, yes. I'm very lucky. Why, a lot of your friends haven't found jobs? No. I mean, yes. They haven't. No. No, it's, it's very worrying. Well, I hope you'll like banking. Oh, I'm sure I will. I expect the personnel office will have told you all about the opportunities for everyone starting work in the bank. Yes. Because it really is true, you know. I mean, all the top men in the bank all started just as you are standing in front of their branch manager at your age, wondering how on earth they were going to cope with all those thousands of pounds you've uh, seen already. Do sit down. Now, I expect the personnel will have told you all about the institute exams. Oh, yes. I start next week at the tech. Oh, good. Good. Well, it's a slog, I know, and most girls give up to get married and have families, but I do hope you'll get stuck in and pass them first, because then you can always come back. Yes. It's all right. Don't worry. I'm not going to lecture you. <laughs> Well, I hope you'll be happy here, and if you aren't, please don't be afraid to come to me, will you? No, thank you. All right. So off you go, and if you'd ask Mr. Everly to come in, please. Yes. Uh, no, no, no leave, leave the door open, please. I, I like it like that, you see. Ah, Mr. Everly, I'd be very grateful for your help on this, um, Burton chap. Now, he's a builder, isn't he? That's right, yes. I see he's got a £50,000 secured loan and an overdraft of 5000 That's a bit high, isn't it? Yes, it is, rather. He wanted it to finish four houses. Yes, I see uh, Mr. Stetchley went to see them. That's right, yes. He wasn't very happy about agreeing the overdraft. Well, no, he wouldn't be. But he notes the houses were almost finished. Yes, just decoration, outside paths and things. Ooh, well, his cash flow shall be looking healthier soon, I should think. He does have a regular cash flow from his ready-mix concrete business. He makes it at his yard, and he's got a good contract for a year to sell to the harbour board. Up there, new key. Oh, yes, I see. Well, we shall just have to wait to see what he wants, won't we? Dear David Jacobs, I may be a mere male, but I do have views about the woman's housework situation. If they want to have a really meaningful relationship with their families, then the best way of ensuring an ongoing dialogue with all the family is to ensure that there is a secure and happy environment in which they can all meet in a happy family interface. Yours sincerely, Claude H. Simkens. Dear David Jacobs, why is it that women today have lost their enjoyment of the really creative role of homemaking? I know my own mother was never happier than when she was up to her elbows in soapy water or on her knees scrubbing the step. And she didn't have all the modern labor-saving devices that make homemaking. Good morning, Tim Hart Productions. I want, oh, my name is Sylvia Telford. I, I wonder if I could speak to Mr. Hart, please. Good, that'll be fine. I'll look forward to it. Goodbye, Mr. Kent. Telford, we've just had a phone message from Mr. Burton's secretary. She said he's terribly sorry, but he can't get to the appointment this morning. He'll ring for another later on. Oh, well, it can't have been all that important. Perhaps it was. We just had this check-in. One thousand. Oh, dear. Well, I don't think we can pay this one, do you? Look, get him on the telephone. Tell him it's most urgent I speak to him within the next half hour.
are you doing? You're wanted on the phone. Come on, this is important. It's the bank. They say they must talk to you within the next half hour. Why? You know why. Did they say? Of course not. You know banks. Right. Old Stetchley, how was it? Heavy? Right. Very. It wasn't Stetchley. It was that new man, Telford. Well, I've forgotten about that. What a good start, eh? my message? Something's cropped up. I, uh, I can't make it. Well, yes, we got that message, but unfortunately something has cropped up here, too, like a cheque drawn by you for a thousand pounds. Well, I negotiated an overdraft. Oh, yes, but you must be aware, at least I hope you're aware, you've already used that. Uh, it's only for a thousand pounds. I mean, surely you won't embarrass me with my supplies for a thousand pounds. have to be a stop somewhere, Mr. Burton, but look... It's very unsatisfactory dealing with us over the telephone when we've never even met, so... I'll drop round right away to see you. No, no, that's all right. I'll, uh, I'll pop in if it's that urgent. No, I wouldn't hear of it, Mr. Burton. I'm sure you wouldn't have cancelled our appointment for a trivial reason. Yeah, but... So I'll see you in, um, 20 minutes, if that's all right. Well, I'm very busy at the moment. Bye for now. I wouldn't say that was the most pressing invitation I've ever received. So I'm afraid I shall have to leave my 11.15 interview to you, Mr. Everly. Oh. Oh, that's all right. Uh, Mrs. Phillips. Oh. Yes, you'd be surprised how often Mr. Stetchley found a pressing appointment when Mrs. Phillips was coming in. Well, why not suggest she move all her money into spillers? I understand the budgie seed market is booming. Oh, I took your advice, by the way. I rang up Tim Hart. Good. You stop being frightened of the commercial theatre. He's invited me round to see him next week. Only for you. Sounded very nice. Yeah, I believe he is. You tell Mark? Not yet. Well, it doesn't seem any point if I don't get it. Oh, I don't know. Just applying indicates a change he might want to know about. Stop being my conscience. Believe me, that's the last thing I want to be. How is it you never got married? I did. She found someone else. I'm sorry. Well, that was a long time ago. Hasn't there been anyone else? Well, I haven't been exactly celibate. I didn't mean that. I know. It seemed possible once or twice, but, well, it never came to anything. And the women who really attracted me have been married already. over to the lorry. Make some coffee. Mr. Telford. <laughs> Jack Burton, hello. Hello, Mr. Burton. We spoke on the telephone about half yeah. an hour ago. Well, you seem to have uh, plenty of space here. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a good yard. Uh, look, the office is here, shall we? Uh... Well, while we're outside, I'd uh, 
rather like to see it. Do you mind? Not at all. Uh, <coughs> uh, it's just very good. You can have very large stock. Yeah? Well, with inflation, it's money in the bank, isn't it? Well, unfortunately not. You see, I'm afraid that the interest you're paying on the money you borrowed to buy this slot is uh, higher than the rise in prices. I suppose so. Do you need all this shelving? Yeah. Well, it's a trading town, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so I gather. Uh, would you like some coffee? I expect Pat's making some. It's your uh, concrete lorry, is it? Yes. We uh, mix the concrete down the road. And uh, your compressor? No, no, we don't need one much. Cheaper to hire. Yes, well, we'll have that cup of coffee now, shall we? Well, it's a pretty enough cottage. When are you moving in? I don't know. Mark moved in last week. Sylvia, you're not splitting up, are you? Oh, of course not. You are going to sell this house, aren't you? Oh, Celia, I just can't get used to the idea of moving out into the sticks. It seems an absurd idea. And Mark, is he happy? Well, he says he is. He's only just started, hasn't he? I mean, give him a month or two, see if he comes to his senses. Why are you so sure he hasn't? What, Dover? I ask you. No, darling, I ask you. How do you know he hasn't come to his senses and is doing what's right for him? Because you can't go back. <laughs> I imagine a lot of people said that to me in the last week or two. Yes, and it's true, isn't it? Well, I don't think life has directions like that backwards or forwards. What does it mean? Accepting more responsibility or less, I suppose. I see. Do you despise Mark Chris's decision? Oh, that's a very strong word. Well, do you? Oh, it's all so confusing. I mean, everything happens so quickly. Perhaps he needed a change more than you knew. Well, he never said anything about it. Well, not until a day or two before he made the move. And you didn't notice anything? No. Oh, you think I should have? Oh, darling, you must stop casting me in the role of judge. I'm not good at it. You know me. I find people not guilty on principle. Guilt is such a boring emotion. Celia, why do you send yourself up so much? Because I do it rather well. What do you think, darling? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, the bloody idiot had just taken him on. And it broke down. I was out of the sight and Pat was shopping. So he just sat there and waited for someone to answer the phone. By the time I got there, it had gone off. Set hard. It has to be a heavy mix for the key, you see, and you don't have a lot of time. So you haven't been able to deliver concrete and all your expensive plants standing idle. So what did you do? I bought another lorry. You bought another lorry? For how much? 8,000. Including the money the bank lent you to finish the houses? I had no option. The concrete business folded and finished anyway. All I need is a year's steady work to clean myself, and I've got it. There's no problem about that. You should have come to us. And you'd have lent me another 5,000. What about the insurance? You can't insure against mechanical breakdown. Oh, well, you can, but the premiums take all the profit. You've got to cut your costs to the bone, you see, when you're tendering for jobs like the key. Oh, nobody does you any favours. What about that lorry out there? How long before you can get the concrete out? Well, if you lend me the money to set a couple of chaps on it, a few days. 
Otherwise, I've got to do it myself and have a look with everything else a couple of weeks. Will you be able to sell it then? Oh, yeah. How much for? Well, I don't know. It's not too bad. It should fetch, well... Jack, tell him! Well, go on, tell him! But we can't go on living like this from minute to minute. I'd rather pack it all in, go bankrupt! You don't know what this is like. You work every hour, every second. And then the machine breaks down, or the weather, or, or people don't pay their bills. That is not worth a bloody candle! broke down the police got there before I did and they got out a ministry examiner and issued a GV9 and they reported me for having an unsafe vehicle on the road a so GV9 a certificate banning the vehicle until certain repairs are done so how much is it worth as it is two and a half three maybe <coughs> is that it I can only sell it to a builder who's got less capital than I've got is it such a bloody fool so you bought new machinery to make concrete and a totally inadequate vehicle to deliver it. I bought the best I could afford. Oh, Christ, it only had to last a year till I finished the payments on the machinery. It's lasted five months. So you still need 5,000 to finish the houses. Yeah, it's mostly concreting and decorating, of course, but I need the lorry and the mixer for that as well. And this check for 1,000? General supplies for the houses. Two East Kent building supplies. Yeah. I had to pay them. If I didn't, I wouldn't have got the stuff for the houses from any supplier in Kent. How much do you owe them? Nothing if you clear that check. Oh, come on, Mr. Burton. This is a check for a thousand pounds. You aren't going to tell me your bill came to exactly that. This is in part payment, isn't it? I owe them four thousand. Four thousand six fifty in pennies. So you need 5,000 to finish the houses. You owe four and a half. That's nearly 10,000. Yeah, but I don't need that. If you clear that cheque, I can get credit. But you're over-trading, Mr. Burton. I mean, you're trying to act like a major contractor, but with no capital. You've expanded far too quickly. So you'll bust me. Put in a receiver. Wouldn't that be a relief, in fact? What it hell is like? Lose everything after all this. Saving up for the concrete business, the houses, the yard, and end up back on the trowel. You're joking. Come on, what are you going to do about that check? Are you going to clear it or not? I, I, I don't know. Let me, let me be perfectly frank. On what I know now, there's no way that I can pay this check, and I have either to pay it or return it today. That's it, then. Well, it probably is. Almost certainly is. However, I'm unwilling to put in the receiver if there's any way we can avoid it. So, I want you to collect up all your books and records. Now, your wife said something about bad debts. Yeah, I'm a builder. Nobody pays a bill until he's sued. All right, well, I need some time. And I've got a lunch appointment at 12.30, damn. Um, could you be in my office at 1.30? Yeah, if it will help. Well, I can't say that it will, but if you want a decision now, it'll have to be no. So it might just be worth looking at the books and giving it an hour or two more. All right. You know, you need to rush home. I could have got myself something to eat. Nonsense. I enjoy seeing you. What do the dentists have to say? Uh, all sound perfect. Good. Well, it's down to you. It's all those apples I eat. I mean, I may get red spider or leaf curl or maggots. My God, what teeth. I miss you next year. I have a long time yet. Ah, oh, maybe it is when you're 17. I shall have to get a job. Well, that should be easy enough. Selling tickets for trips around the bay, or an usherette in the promenade follies. How about a candy floss store? Or selling whelks? Look, I'm not joking, Peter. What? And there isn't anything for me in Dover. Well, what do you want me to say? I mean, I, I can't advise you. No, of course you can't. I'm sorry. There isn't anything I can I say. I know, I know. 
I do care. Yes, of course you do. Oh, we're being very unfair on you. Rubbish! I'm old enough to know that mummies and daddies are sometimes cross with each other. Yes, but it's not fair to involve you. You can't help it. And neither can Dad. No. No, but what's wrong is not to... to talk it out with you and involve you properly. Well, you can't. Look, it wouldn't help if you did. In the quarrel between England and Germany, I expect Poland would have been ever so happy to have been left out. It was Britain and Germany, actually. Ah, yes. Well, I wasn't counting those people across the border, oh, you know. Get on with your lunch. You're going to be late back for school. I know you're very like your father sometimes. There's no answer to that. Uh, Mr. Adderley, have you a moment, please? Yes, of course. What did you find? Well, it's bad. It's worse than it appears. His concrete lorry is out of action. He's bought another. Oh, dear. Are you going to return the cheque? Well, probably, but it's a lousy staff. First day in the office, I bankrupt a local firm. Well, it's not your fault. He hasn't been levelling with us. You tell me what you know about Burton. Well, we do see him from time to time. Oh, yes, I can see that. Is he trustworthy? He repaired my roof last winter. Oh. Were you satisfied? Oh, yes. He came quickly. His bill was reasonable. But after all, we were his bankers. What about his reputation in the town? Good, I think. I haven't heard anything against him. Sorry, I'm not helping much. No, that's all right. I just want to be absolutely sure before I put in the receiver. If he could finish those houses, we'd get more of our money back than if we join a queue of creditors. Oh, of course, but can he finish them? Will he finish them? Or will another few thousand find their way into some other enterprise? By the way, I saw that the loan for the yard was fully secured. What exactly is the security? There's the yard itself, a floating charge on the business, and his own house. Oh, my God. So if he goes bust, he loses his house as well? Probably. Thank you. Oh, that looks very nice. Thank you. Well, it's very good of you to see me at such short notice. Not at all. The parish council will be most impressed. They pass a resolution one evening, and within 24 hours, I'm locked in combat with the forces of Mammon. Oh, that sounds ominous. Do we eat this soup or throw it at each other? Well, I thought a civilised negotiation over lunch, and if we still can't agree, we can throw the pudding at each other. Ah, lychees are ten paces. <laughs> we could come to a sticky end. Oh, <laughs> Mr. So, what has your revolutionary parish council been up to? Well, uh, as I indicated, they... Uh, well, actually, we are worried about South Africa. Yes. Obviously, we're under no illusion that any action we may take will have any immediate effect. But the moral imperative is pretty clear. We ought not to support in any way the racist regime in that country. Yes, I see. And the council is worried that the £74.23p in the current account and the £19.16p in the organ fund account might be being used by the bank as a prop to support a tottering fascist regime. Mr. Telford, we don't think the actual sums are important. No, I'm sorry, I was just... We think the moral standards. If we do withdraw our account, we shall, after all, publicise the fact and urge others to follow us. Yes, I see. As you know, the Church, through the World Council, is supporting the liberation movements in Southern Africa. And it's silly at the same time to be supporting the other side, no matter how small the sums involved. Oh, of course, and I support the stand being taken by the parish council. As an individual, I'm sure you do. But I'm approaching you as a representative of Knight's Bank, which has a long history of investment in South Africa. Had, Mr. Kenton. The bank has changed its policy. Oh. Yes, we're ceasing to invest in South Africa. And, as far as we can, winding up our involvement there. You surprise me, Mr. Douglas. Well, that a bank can take a moral stand? Well, frankly, yes. Well, it didn't. You see, Mr. Gunter, black Africa is now far more important economically than the dwindling uh, white Africa. Uh, Nigerian oil, Zambian copper, and Ghanaian cocoa all add up to more than the South African involvement is worth. I see. So the pressure being exerted by the Dover Parish Council will be successful, uh, providing it's supported by the governments of Ghana, Nigeria, Zambia, Tanzania, and so forth. Mm, precisely. You have some powerful allies. Of course, you could uh, withdraw your accounts because you don't like the motive for our withdrawal, but uh, 
That would seem to me to be perverse. Yes. Yes, it would be. So it seems that in this case, at least, God has triumphed over the forces of mammon. Well, hardly, Mr. Telford. I'm sure it's more a case of mammon finding it tactically convenient to wear God's dress for a while. Passing by, and I thought I'd drop you. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh. Come in, Addy. It's in the kitchen, I'm afraid. I'm cooking. Why? Uh, would you like a cup of tea or a drink of? Uh, no, thank you. What have you been doing since the meeting? I've been to the Regent, trying to work out with Jeremy Fulton how on earth he could overspend £5,000 on a budget of £10,000. And now you're going back to the office? Right. <clears throat> you ought to burn A to Z. Well, I haven't got a very good sense of direction, but are you sure there isn't a quicker way from Soho to Piccadilly than via Islington? <laughs> well, actually, I had a call from Tim Hart. I thought I'd let you know. Oh, thank you. Not at all. I just told him the truth. And I wanted to tell you I've got to go to the north for a month. When? Tomorrow. That's very short notice, isn't well, it? Jerry's been taken ill. I'll say. We're surveying the northern scene, and I've been elected. Well, it'll make a change. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Except that you'll probably be gone by the time I get back. Oh, Max, I haven't got the job yet. I don't suppose I will. Now, don't undervalue yourself. Sylvia, I've been thinking about our conversation in the pub. I'm worried about you. Why? See, if you get this job, well, it could create problems between you and Mark. It's a bit dramatic, isn't it? Is it? No, not complete gaspers. Well, it's probably interfering on me, but I felt I had to say it. You have every right to tell me to bugger off and mind my own business. I'm not going to do that, am I? Good. See, the funny thing about marriage is that each one has its particular breaking point. Well, for one, it could be a single act of adultery. For another, a forgotten birthday. Another could survive adulteries on the grand scale and a total memory blackout on anniversaries of all kinds. What's yours? Oh, gin and tonic, I think. What will you have? Whiskey would do very well. The problem. About a breaking point is that you don't always know you've reached it until you've passed it. Thanks. How did your marriage break up, if you if you don't mind my asking? Died of neglect, I suppose. The usual story of drift. Suddenly an exciting man comes along and Mary realised she was only half alive. Maybe it would have been better if she'd got a job. She did. That's where she met him. In an inland revenue office, would you believe? Oh. Cheers. Oh, Mr. Batten, I'm terribly sorry to keep you waiting. It's all right, just arrived. Right. Right, come into my office. Please sit down. Mr. Telford, your wife just rang. Oh, uh, do sit down. Uh, did she leave a message? No, she said it wasn't urgent. I see. Thank you very much. Well, what have you decided? I've decided that I cannot extend the bank's position any further. I know what the bloody hell am I doing down here. You enjoy this, do you? Oh, now, just a moment, Mr. Burton. I want to see if it's possible for you to continue trading without the bank lending you more money. Well, just hold on to that cheque for a few more days. Well, it's not possible, Mr. Burton. I have either to pay or return this cheque today. Why, go on. Surely a day or two is not going to make any difference. No, it's an inflexible rule of banking, I'm afraid. A cheque must be dealt with on the same day, either paid or returned. And that's more important than a whole business. That gives employment in the area. Yes, I'm afraid it is. If banks drop their standards, bent the rules, it will be bad for all businesses. Anyway, now you need, I reckon... £6,000 to continue trading. Right. Right. 5000 
to finish the houses and a thousand to meet that check. Now, how much is owed to you? Five thousand. Realistically, if you put them in the hands of a collecting agency, how much would you get? Three is pretty safe. The rest is difficult. But I don't need 6,000 to continue training. But you said you did. Now, if you clear that cheque, I can get credit. So how much do you need? Say, 5,000. You know, it was pretty obvious this morning that you were overstocked. You must have thousands tied up in stock. Can you get rid of any of it? Well, how? I had to do that and need another job, and then I'd have to get credit for months. Just a moment, uh, Mr. Burton. Um, would you mind waiting there? I shan't be long. Excuse me, Carol. Could you tell me how much is in Mr. Brooks' account, the supermarket yes, now? Could you look up Brooks for me, please? Yes, ma'am. Oh, oh, pardon, madame. Je trouve quelqu'un qui peut vous aider. Uh, un moment, s'il vous plaît. 800 pounds. 800 pounds? I'd have thought he had more than that. Oh, he's got a deposit account as well. Oh, well, let's see that one. Can you look up the deposit number? Miss Redley wouldn't look after that customer key. She says she's been waiting a long time. Yes, of course. She only speaks French. Oh, 8,640. That's better. Right, thank you, Carol. Now, whenever that happens... Um, Carol, would you get me Mr. Brooke on the telephone, please? Yes, of course. And, uh, Carol, I'll take it out of here. Sorry to keep you, Mr. Burton. I shan't be long. It's all right. Hello, Mr. Brook. Knights Bank here. I have Mr. Telford for you. Thank you. Mr. Brook. Yes. Oh, Mark Telford here. Yeah, we met earlier this morning, if you remember. Yes, of course I remember, Mr. Telford. Uh, Mr. Brook, you said you were setting up a company to run the supermarket. Yes, that's right. Next Monday it starts. Now, no doubt your accountant has explained to you that as soon as you cease trading as a self-employed trader, all your tax over the last three years is reassessed and becomes due immediately. Yes, that's right. They told me it would come to about 5,000. I mean, it's all right. I've been very careful about it. I've saved it up religiously. It's in your bank. Yes, I know. Now, did he also tell you that you ought to pay as many bills as you can before Monday to minimise the tax due? Mm, I've done all that. Everything's paid off. Well, look, I have an idea. I've got a customer who's a builder. There's a lot of stock that he wants to get rid of. Now, if you bought from him, say, £4,000 worth of stuff and paid him before Monday, it would reduce your tax due by at least £2,000. And, of course, you'd have to lay out the £4,000 now, but over the next few months you'd save at least uh, £2,000 that uh, wouldn't go to the tax man. Oh, we really, man. Just uh, understand clearly. Uh, you're not at this stage uh, engaging him to build your extension. I mean, you must, you must put that out to tender as normal. Of course, he may come up with the lowest price, in which case, fine. But at the moment, you're only buying stock, not engaging a builder. Now, do you understand? Yes. And I'd really say it. Oh, yes, of course. But if for any reason you'd rather wait to do your extension, please don't agree to this. I mean, don't feel pressured by me, whatever you do. Oh, no, 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 no. I'd be delighted. I really want the space. Oh, good. Well, the builder's name is Burton. Oh, I know Jack Burton. You fitted my show. And you found that satisfactory? Oh, absolutely. First class. Oh, good. That's better than ever. Well, he's in my office at the moment. May I send him down right away to look at the plans? Fine, yes. And thank you very much, Mr. Delvin. It's not often that a bank manager gives you a couple of grand. <laughs> it's not me that's giving it to you. It's the chance of the exchequer. Thank you very much, Mr. Oh. Brooke. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you, Carl. You must remember to open. I think I've found a way. Really? You know Brooks Supermarket, I believe. Yeah, I've done some work for him. Well, he's having an extension built. He's got the plans. 
and he has agreed to buy up to £4,000 worth of stock from you and pay you before Monday. You mean you told Brooke I was strapped for money? No, of course not. He's paying you quickly for his own reasons, which are his business, which I won't discuss with you any more than I discuss yours with him. I'm sorry, it's just... No, that's all, that's all right, forget it. So, I want you to go down there now, see the plans, and sell him up to £4,000 worth of materials to be used in his extension. Right. Now, just, just a moment. I must make it clear that you are not, at this stage, being engaged as the builder. You're just selling stock. After all, Mr. Brook ought to put the job out to tender. So, you understand that? Yeah. Now, the next thing is that I feel I must protect Mr. Brook, as he's my customer just as much as you are. So, therefore, I want you to give me a copy of the bill and plans. I will have them independently checked, and if the prices are at all high, I shall recommend to Mr. Brook that he doesn't pay the bill, in which case I shall put the receiver into your firm immediately. Don't worry, I wouldn't twist Tony Brook. Well, obviously, I don't think you will, otherwise I wouldn't be doing this. But you understand, I have a, a duty to look after him. Yeah. As you're looking after me. Thank you. There's just one more thing. We shall want you to increase your personal guarantee to cover the increased facility. Do I do anything now? No, no. If you come back here after you've seen Mr. Brooke, and I'll hand you over to my clerk and she'll sort you out. So I'll see you then. Yeah. Well, thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Burton. Hello. Tell her I have the chief general manager for you. Oh, thank you. Hello, ma'am. Hello, sir. Having a good rest, are you? I'm managing to keep awake. Well, I thought I'd ring to see if you're settling in. And uh, to tell you that the party of Manton's people are coming over next week. Uh, and I'd like you to look after them down there. Oh, yes, of course. You'll be pleased to see them, I expect. Give them some excitement. I'll look after them. Goodbye, sir. Yeah, that's all right. I hope you're going to be on it. <laughs> you're joking. This is my contribution. Sponsored poster making. It'll be fun. Yeah, I suppose so. If I'm on it. It's such a bore, isn't it? I mean, I wouldn't mind being out in the sticks during the week if I could just get up to London for the weekends. But this way round, it's just bloody ridiculous. I dare say you could stay with us your weekend. That's nice of you, Jenny. But it doesn't actually solve the problem, does it? Someone to help you. Thank you. Sylvie, lady, please. Hello. Everything all right? <laughs> of course. I, I just thought I'd surprise you, that's all. Well, you've certainly done that. Come on through. This is a pleasant surprise. Yes. What's the matter? Nothing. Is Peter all right? Fine. No, I, I, in fact, I've got some good news. Oh. Yes, I've... I've got an interview for a job. Where? Uh, Tim Hart Productions. Uh, he's a very important theatrical manager. He puts all sorts of things on in the West End. Uh, oh, I shan't get it, of course, but just to get an interview is... And it's... In London? Of course. I see. Oh, Mark, please. Well, we'd better celebrate, then. What would you like? Um, oh, sherry would be fine.
Cheers. Here's hoping. Of course, but for what? Whatever will make us both happy. I'll drink to that.